Well, hello. Welcome to the little shop. Today we get to work on a Stratocaster. This is one of those really special stories that uh, I hope you enjoy. This was actually gifted to one of my regular customers. And something I learned a long time ago, just like there's no such thing as a free guitar, there's no such thing as a free puppy, free car, anything. Nothing's free. So, what you don't know at this point is I've already got like an hour and a half in this guitar. It was very filthy. A bit of a mess everywhere. Fingerboard was caked with crud. So I got it cleaned up, all put back together. You say it had to bridge entirely apart. That's why all the saddles are straight. I always set them as far back as I can to start with. Yeah, you know, when I'm starting to work on it. Uh, as I adjust the height and intonation, that will all fall into place. But I actually had the saddles off so I could tighten up the bolts for the tremolo block and all that. We've cleaned the electronics, cleaned the output jack, had to replace a couple bolts that were missing in the one pickup. Like I say, just give it a thorough overall cleaning. This got a good scrubbing with 409. Anyway, so, I start to set up the guitar and run into a problem. As it turns out, there's a good indication of it. See how roughed up around the truss rod nut slot it is? Someone has stripped out the truss rod nut. Like I say, I see this a lot on these fenders. I see it way too much. Thankfully, I have a cure for it over here, courtesy of uh, Darren Riley in North Carolina. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, for you guys like me that uh, doesn't have much to do with Fender, frankly, I'm still waiting for Fender to pay me for warranty work that was done in the 70s. I don't think it's going to happen. Anyway, uh, Darren's a really good source. He's in North Carolina, uh, DarrenRiley.com for Fender parts. Got a lot of stuff. Not just Fender parts, he's got a lot of good stuff. Darren's a good guy. He ships fast. You know, it's just a good point for you. So, that being said, I have my new truss rod nuts. I have the fillers and the washers. Of course, there's a few extra washers there that I keep on hand for other things. So, what we have to do... Let's go back up here. What we have to do is heat up this area and pull that insert, which will allow us to take the nut out, replace the stripped out nut, and then replace the insert and all that. So we're going to heat it up and try to get all that out. First thing we're going to do is take my X-Acto knife and cut just around the outside of that inlay. Hopefully it'll slide out without chipping any finish. We're going to do that with a couple of little tools I've made. Let me uh, get everything together here and I'll show you. What I am planning on doing here is using a little metal insert I've made. I made this several years ago. It's just a piece of 3 16 steel tubing. Actually, this is music wire. It's very hard. The plan is, is to heat this up well with my big soldering iron. And I left it long to, so it hold more heat. I want to heat up this area where the plug's glued in. And if we're really lucky, it'll slide right out. If we're very lucky, we'll be able to reuse it. So we'll see how that turns out. So away we go. Okay, I found my pointer. Anyway, <laughs> man, it's 
been a day. Anyway, so you see I've added some uh, loosely adhered aluminum tape here to kind of act as the heat deflector. There shouldn't be that much heat, but eh, we're just not going to take any chances. I've got my rod in here. I've got my iron. So what I'm going to do this in my little 40 watt weller here. And what we're going to do is put a little solder on it so it'll heat better. And we're going to start heating. So we're going to heat this up here a bit. It's going to take a few minutes. When this gets nice and warm back here, we'll see what happens. Like I say, we're very lucky. All this come out well. If not, I'm going to have to resort to uh, heavier tools like easy outs and screw extractors get this nut out. Hopefully there's enough teeth left on the Allen wrench socket on it to put negative pressure on it. It was stripped out on the positive side so hopefully I can get enough grab to back this out here easily. So we're going to see what happens. Okay that ought to be enough of that. Let's see what happens here. Well, we have movement. I think this is going to work out if it slipped once. Got to be really careful and hold pressure on it. This could be worse. I've had to repair a lot of truss rods over the years. And I gotta say this, uh, when this goes this well, this is a blessing. I've had to take lots of fingerboards off, take lots of Gibson style truss rods out, make truss rods. Come on, just a little bit more. We're just about to get it here. Here's the insert. Okay, well the nut's loose. But it's not coming out. Okay. Well, like I say, this is out, so that's a start. I think I'll clean that up and reuse it. I'll be back. Okay. Sneaky trick number 502. I put a little bit of super glue on the end of the Allen wrench and hit the nut with some accelerator. I put the wrench in the nut and gave it a few minutes to set up. So let's see what happens here. Yes. <laughs> Love it when a plan works out. So there we go. And I can heat that up, get that wrench back out of there and the nut. <coughs> Doesn't matter, won't be using the nut anyway. But uh, 
that worked all right so now let's get on with the uh, new nut so just to point something out here to you uh, this is the fender wrench uh, I actually have filed the end of it back a little bit to get a good sharp clean edge on it they're a little longer than a regular wrench uh, to be used that way this is actually supposed to go in there but you see it's pretty much worn uh, here is the heart of the problem that really doesn't fit well so it doesn't take a whole lot to strip it out I actually asked Fender years ago what size the wrench was supposed to be for those and they said well in a perfect world it would be an eighth inch but in manufacturing it's not perfect so that's a little sloppy so heads up guys be careful with these alright I've already dropped the washer back in there and I've put some machinist wax on the nut here we don't want to use oil so let's get the new nut in here like I say we can be careful doing this but we don't have any tension on it so that works for us too another word up guys when you're adjusting these necks on these guitars especially if you have to put positive pressure on it to correct a forward bow put some pressure on the neck to take the pressure off of the truss rod when you're adjusting it you won't have to force it all with the uh, truss rod nut then here's another little tip for you Okay, nuts back in. We've got a little tension on it. So let's turn our attention to cleaning this back up. And we're going to get it back in. Alright, well, we've got everything cleaned up here. And get some tight bond here on this plug. that started to get my hands wiped off now another trick <laughs> a little piece of dowel exacto handle come on baby And we are pretty much seated. There we go. So, it's seated in a slightly different spot. It's almost flush down here, but a little difference up here. But that's a whole lot easier than replacing the whole plug and recarving it with this. So we'll let that set up probably overnight. And we'll trim all this up and get it finished up. I'm going to go ahead and clean some of this up here. 
and then continue on later. But I can get the bulk of a lot of this off here tonight. Uh, it's not moving anywhere, <laughs> it's glued in. So, I can do some of this tonight. angles everything on this. Yeah, it came pretty close to fitting. I think the new nut is probably a little bit deeper than the old one. It looked like the uh, Allen head slot was a little deeper. and this. switch over to the cellophane tape which is only like two thousandths thick yeah we're all flush just a little sanding on that we're ready to start touching stuff up Just for fun. Let's see if our neck will back bow. Like I say guys, when you're just knees, take a little tension off the neck. Don't make the rod do it all. Start and get back, Bo. So that means our truss rod is now working. Here we go. Okay. Okay. You can see we've put a little bit more metal tape up here. Let's protect this a little bit. We're going to strip sand this kind of blend that in a little bit. And we're 
all nice and flush, we can quit. Now oh, we're looking good here. Let's get one across this way. I think, well, looks like our sandpaper just about had it. But that is a really quick way to take care of that. And while we're at it, look at that little piece of 400 too. Okay, that's that. And for touch ups, I'm going to use super glue. So I want to wipe that down with some naphtha and clean everything up there. We're using some water thin super glue. It will melt into the old finish rather well. Uh, if you follow this channel, you see me actually do this before. I use super glue a lot, especially like to redo these areas right here and for the nut on the fingerboard. Uh, when I've done a refret and had to sand the fingerboard. Let's give that a little time to set up. And we'll be in good shape. We can sand that down and buff it out. Nobody will ever know we were here. No, except for you guys. So, there we go. So we've been sanding away here. I'm down to a thousand grit sandpaper. There's a little chip over here I'm taking care of too while I'm at it. Okay. I'm going to need some 2000 grit. Well, well, looks like I might have to do a little bit more sanding right there. Okay. Well, we've given it a good sanding with the 2000 grit sandpaper. Let's see if it'll polish out here. We may have to do this a couple times. What I'm actually using here is a little bit of uh, turtle wax liquid polishing compound and a cloth diaper. I blend it into the other area. It's looking pretty good. All right. This is looking pretty good. 
had to go back and sand it down a little bit more. Sometimes these little imperfections show up you know, when you start buffing things out, rubbing them out. It'll look really good right up until it starts getting shiny and any little imperfection will just show up. But I think we're just about to call this done. We're looking real good. I think that'll do it for that. Let's get the nut back on it, the tuner's back on it. Let's get it strung back up. And there we go. About three hours worth of time. Uh, a new truss rod nut. A few other little parts here and there. We have a fully functional strat ready to go back on the road coming to a town near you soon probably anyway they said we had to fix the truss rod nut we'd uh, cleaned up the guitar it was a mess cleaned electronics replaced a few bolts cleaned up the bridge had a lot of stuck adjustment screws on it cleaned up the fingerboard and the neck tightened up the tuners you know, it did the typical thing we usually do in a setup. But the big thing here was fixing the truss rod. So we actually have the neck straightened out. After I got the neck straight, I cut the nut height, of course did the bridge height and all that intonation, and it is ready to go. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to say it again. For you guys that play fenders out there, especially the American Standard stuff that has a truss rod like this, be very careful messing around with the truss rod. I see way too many of these stripped out and torn up. So anyway, until next time, play nice.